All right. Welcome everyone to the probably the shortest trifecta nutrition talk we're ever going to have. We <laughs> decided to um, talk for 20, 30 minutes and then um, I had to reset my room. So I apologize for anyone trying to get in here. You there? We're waiting for Janice to come in. But um, we're going to, um, so we're going to talk adaptogens today. And um, for anyone that doesn't know what they are, they're basically a a group of uh, should I call them herbs like na natural n natural herbs that have an effect on the body and they've been around for years and um, you know personally I've been taking supplements and everything in the world of sports supplements for years and it hasn't been until I met Adrian that I actually started dabbling in adaptogens um, and they have a profound effect, and some of them I'm discovering now are more potent than their counterparts in the sport nutrition world, and we're going to talk about a couple of those today. How long, Adrian, have you been um, experimenting and taking adaptogens? Oh, uh, probably for a decade, but like dialing it in, probably six years. Like, you know, you go through a, a phase of just messing around, taking random stuff, and then recently, probably the half decade, dialing in like which herb does what at what specific dosage. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's so interesting. And I, I know I've, um, you know, texted you a number of times because I've been dabbling and, and researching and, and it's really crazy. And, and I guess we'll, I mean, I have like in my head, I kind of want to talk in categories and, um, the first one I want to talk about came up because um, a couple of years ago, I took a supplement um, called Matador, and Matador is like, um, well, it's a nutrient partitioner, and mm -hmm. what was the one by T Nation? T Nation had a potent one that was so expensive. Oh, uh, it was made out of blueberries, indigo. Yes, it was indigo, and it was outrageously expensive, so I took indigo, um, had some decent results with as a nutrient partitioner. And then um, a local supplement shop around here um, had a supplement called Matador, and that one worked really, really well. And lately, I've been playing with the adaptogen berberine. Mm. That's a new one for me. Um, you were mm -hmm. the one that I heard talk about it, and the way you were talking about it, I, I, my, my wheels started spinning right away, and I'm like, wow, this is a pretty potent um, – nutrient partitioner. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but its main, I mean, if we talk about its main mechanism or what it's known for, it's known as a glucose disposal supplement. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and you're mainly using it um, for, you know, to help you with higher carbohydrate content meals. Correct. I'll tell you what, so as soon as I heard that, that you were doing that, um, I started playing around with it before my really high carb meals, really, mm -hmm. really meals. and I noticed that I would almost get that same effect that you would get like when you were eating really clean, then you had this like cheap meal and all of a sudden mm -hmm. vascular and veiny mm -hmm. and, and it was almost like, I can't believe how cheap this is and how potent it actually is. Mm hmm and a, a couple of folks here, so I've been talking about it, and a couple of folks here that are um, on ketogenic diets, when they would go off the rails a little bit, um, they've started experimenting with berberine. And I'll tell you what, they're absolutely sold on it. Yeah. They're sold. And so I look into it a little bit more, and berberine has so many other benefits. So many. I mean, it, it, it's almost like, you know, we talk a lot about foundational health. It's just good for you. Mm -hmm. It's all around good for you. What, mm -hmm. Maybe we could talk a little bit about the way that you use it or when, when it works with some of your nutrition clients, like when you're actually particularly using it and what scenarios. Yeah, and, sure. You know, so how, how are you guys using that? So or, did Janice have some in the background too? Back it. What you stack it with? Are we stacking berberine? Or stack it or Hold on, that's loaded. Why don't we go berberine first and what? then any stacks? Stacking, okay. 
and any stats. Let's go over just berberine by itself. And then if you are, spe are you, are you specially stacking it with something, Adrian? Uh, depends. And I'll, I'll go into that. All right. And I'll be. Berberine first. All right. Let's hear about berberine as a standalone first. Sure. So berberine by itself is great for anti-inflammation. That's like the key, right? And obviously inflammation is the key to all, you know, stress, mostly going into like disease prevention and health promotion. So we have to look at those as two separate things. So berberine has been researched between 500 milligrams and the upscales of 1500 milligrams. Now, if someone is going in for just, there's, you know, again, we have to break categories again into health and performance. Performance, I see more of, you know, almost in body comp too, right? Body composition, losing fat, gaining muscle, right? Or extending your performance outcome. Berberine, could help with that, but it's more of a health supplement. We go specifically into global inflammation, lowering of blood sugar, and most importantly, lowering um, blood pressure. So if I have a client that's coming in, like we were just talking about off, cam off camera, off recording, and we have a lot of people that come in that just have a lot going on, right? It's the cheapest, I call it like my Swiss army knife. Like there's so many usages, there's so many things. I can't find a reason kind of not to take it, which is a strong word coming from me when I'm like, uh, you know, there's so many layers to it. So if someone's coming to me for fat loss, uh, I would have them again. Sometimes I would start taking it every day at 500 milligrams. And then during their higher carb, whatever they're, you know, they're going to have a heavy carb meal and have, might have them go upwards to 1500 that day like once with every carb meal, because most people are eating carbs. Again, it can, it can help influence the glu glu glucose disposal rate by like 30%. There's not anything researched that can do that besides metformin, which is like comparable on the pharmaceutical scales. Um, so for someone that's coming in that might be a lot of BMI, um, could be at a risk factor for obesity, that could be something I can suggest. I cannot do anything, so I'm not a doctor. I can suggest that to help the, the immediately of lowering blood pressure, helping control blood sugar. Now for someone that's more into like Janice, like we're stacking, we're getting more into like some carb cycling. I would stack that with either one or two things. One, um, it's uh, grapefruit, some sort of grapefruit um, extract or a citrus like compound. Because if you look at a lot of glucose disposal agents, they have a lot of like either grapefruit in them or um, there's another extract that I cannot grab in my brain right now. However, that will be a good stack because you're just doubling up on your glucose disposal agent. But most of these, you know, carb pills or, or sugar, sugar reducing pills, the first ingredient is almost always 500 milligrams of Burberry. Yeah. Everything else is just kind of garbage in my opinion. But what, the only thing I've seen it stacked well with is grape, grapefruit. What do you think... Um you know, cinnamon is, is cinnamon, a, yeah. Is is another one that that um you know will will, will um you know uh, enhance your insulin sensitivity. With our berberine, you know, correct. The, the, yeah, so our, the the berberine that I'm taking has some cinnamon. Let me let, let, let me ask you this: Is there a, a? I know it depends, but is there a standard go to as far as this many milligrams of berberine for this many grams of carbs? So if you're gonna do 50 grams of carbs, this many yeah. Like, is there something that's like kind of like a simple go-to? Yeah, so that's what I was kind of texting you. Like, per 50, I take 500. So if I'm eating like two donuts, I'm taking one. If I'm having like double up on soup, it's, so 500, I mean, again, this is what I've seen. 500 milligrams per 50 grams will we'll have a huge impact on how you actually, you know, the blood goes through the system, how much insulin is released, where, where it's getting carried to, too. So that's that. The, it's it's very profound. It's a great great supplement, and it's cheap as shit. It's cheap. It's really cheap, ten to twenty bucks. And Adrian, you know, I, I think what we do as nutrition coaches is we um we understand a theory, and then we start stacking the theories and applying them to enhance. Mm -hmm. Go into a little bit more about what I've been doing with myself, um, because I, I swear I'm the Ben Greenfield of uh, Newtown. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what, what I'm doing with it, I use it in two instances only. Um, I, mm -hmm. I do 
in, in cheat meals, but um, the, 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 I'm trying to take advantage of two things. Um, the one way I use it is on a day like today, where um, today, usually I do my 24 hour fast on Wednesday, but mm. it got better for me because I'm super busy. So um, I'm doing it today. So what I'll do is after I, um, I'll be done here for a little bit at three o'clock, I'll go home, I'll take probably a thousand milligrams of berberine and I'll have like some uh, like rice noodles with like a stir mm. chicken, okay? And I'll probably do a hundred grams, right? But the sure. 100 grams today is because I actually exercise today. And mm-hmm. I do a lot of a glycogen depletion. So totally. So what I'll do is I'll look to super enhance the uptake of that. The other way I'm using it is I'm using it um, on my normal days of eating if I'm going to do a workout and get some simple carbohydrates in afterwards. Because when, when you work out, the, you know, you, you have a, a glute four that goes to the edge of the muscle. Mm-hmm. You don't release a lot of insulin. It's not insulin dependent, you know, glycogen mm-hmm. after a workout. So I'm trying to take advantage of the post-workout window. So what I do is I eat a ton of carbs right after I'm done working out. Mm-hmm. Because it's non-insulin dependent and I want to speed up the disposal mm, mm-hmm. now, plus take berberine in that yep. and take in a bunch of really good carbohydrates so I'm not using as much for cheat meals I'm trying to play with physiology but absolutely that was, that's the first my my first like you know it I was gonna interrupt but I didn't I was actually proud of myself there is that's what I call like the ultimate physiological window like if we're going to really stack things, which I love to do, it's like my favorite thing of like, how can I completely maximize a situation, right? So if I'm going to go ham on some carbs, right, that morning, I'm probably going to do close to a fasted and not, not nutrient fasted. Like I'm still going to take my, you know, intra workout nutrition sugars, but I probably might not take my pre, but I'm just getting a little bit of what I need just enough though, but not actually not enough. Cause I do want to deplete just yeah. enough to kind of not kill myself. Right. And then after that, I'm in a hyper absorbent state. Like you said, like my muscles are just ready and primed. So anything that's coming in, I mean, depending on your goals, like if I want to, you know, replenish and and go into hypertrophy and all that stuff. Sure. But if I want to really maximize, you know, not having a huge release, then I'm going to take a thousand milligrams of berberine, eat my face off. I might do that again later. You know what I'm saying? So that's like the ultimate, like what you're doing is you're creating a physiological window of a specific anabolic route. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's like, here we're going and we're going to go anabolic instead of catabolic. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and And you're controlling inflammation. mm Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. And I, and I I honestly, um, I feel great um, after I do it. And again, keep on talking about the price you pay for berberine. It's like mm-hmm. dirt cheap. Yeah. Like why isn't everyone kind of taking this? Because it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Well, cause metformin's better to sell. Yeah. It's, it's the, the competitor is a pharmaceutical drug and they're, they li- I mean, you can go to anyone listening to this can go to examine.com tape in berberine and metformin and there's comparative studies and you could just Google it if you want. And there is, plenty and plenty of again like one's a pharma drug one's a natural herb one you get you know people get reimbursed for and there's i never knock the medical community but some doctors actually do know about berberine they do and they might even like they you know they don't have too much but it's becoming so much of an like i had a client recently that a1c levels were like 7.2 and that's like very scary place to be so they actually did a metformin run. And then I asked the doctor, hey, would it be okay if we could section off the berberine? They were totally on board. Hey. So that's cool. So then the client doesn't have to, but you know, in, in the beginning, sometimes a um, uh, Western medicine approach needs to be done because it's at a point where you could go into a diabetic shock or something, you know, and then taking that person, it's just nice to have these alternatives or cool, you know, diet exercise. Yes. But maybe now we intermittently layer with berberine. Um. Along those lines of exactly what you said, the met, uh, metamorphin, or I know like lupifine is also another one that has like the metamorphin in it. So client, yeah. The last client and also had been kind of like pre diagnosed with pre diabetic. Mm. Years has been off. Things are okay for her, but she had done more of a ketogenic diet. Mm. But lifestyle got in the way and she wasn't able to maintain. 
we're working with her um, and I did tons of research and there were the, t the things that I found it's like, hey, we have this supplement. She's not on it right now. I'm kind of like working with her on getting to the point where she feels comfortable enough to take it. But right now I'm just trying to see, hey, how many carbohydrates will your body naturally even tolerate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and for her, it was like the fear of carbs because mm. Life, she hasn't been able to do it, but I know mm -hmm. her. I think that would be a great supplement. Um, sure, yeah. But more importantly, her one day a week that she has four or five drinks um, <laughs> would be a great day for her to be, you know, on Saturdays. Like, I'm going to do 15, 1500 milligrams of berberine on that day, you know, maybe the day the day before. Um, yeah. It was, I was amazed at the, the amount of research that actually was done on it. Yeah, and it's, it's in the system for at least 24 hours. So usually um, if someone's having a bigger drinking day, I try to make sure that the berberine's not like, if they're going to drink on Saturday, for example, I'll try to load like either Friday and, and very early Saturday, just so there's no like contraindications because I have, re because it does lower blood sugar and um, uh, blood pressure and then alcohol, you just, De again, depending on the person, but I've, I've, I've had some people who've taken it and they drink and they feel like very, very dizzy. You know what I'm saying? So like, and again, they could have just been drinking too much, but I'm always just like with that type of thing due, due to, due to what it really does to the body, I try to like give a, you know, if they're going to drink on Saturday, we'll, we'll take it all week on Friday, then very early Saturday morning. And then you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny that the, the low blood sugar thing, I experienced that because I was also experimenting with just, um, taking it with my pre-workout carbs and that was a no-go for me and yeah was, yeah with the, in the, with the uh indigo and the matador too mm -mm. The, no it, i couldn't i couldn't handle the feeling uh during the workout actually sometimes i would get so hungry during the workout i literally couldn't work out i have to go eat. yeah yeah no I've, I've i've had very similar things like my stomach like hurts and i'm like nauseous mm -hmm. i gotta eat immediately yeah so that's that's berberine is is awesome yeah what about so let let's let's stay around the workout because mo most of the people uh, that we're dealing with are are, mm -hmm. are people. Um, what what do we think about anything to replace kind of like I, I try to you know nowadays I'm trying to steer people off the pre workouts and on to maybe some adaptogens that would kind of help them you know as like almost like a stimulant you know maybe not fry their adrenals. So. Mm -hmm. Like what, 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 what you, what's your go-to for that? Or is it more, I mean, focus is, I mean, whatever it is, it's meant stimulation. It makes you feel, yeah. but is there actually something that acts like a, like a caffeine? I mean, is caffeine considered an adaptogen? No, not, no, no. Um, caffeine's in a special, special place. Yeah. Um, like anything that would mobilize, um, like has the same properties as stimulant, maybe mobilizes yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's, so there's two, one is you'll, you'll feel the other one you won't necessarily. So the cool thing about adaptogens, if, if you need to go up, it'll bring you up. If you need to go down, it'll bring you down. So rhodiola, I think is hands down, probably the best for mental and physical performance and to reduce fatigue in both of those areas. So rhodiola, um, also good for improving mood. I really did a lot of it when I was in grad school and it just kept me alert. I mean, there's been a lot of, you know, old hearsay where that was like the main uh, route that like the Vikings used when they were in high stress levels and they were able to continue their mental um, and physical like prowess, right? So between now the, the, the dosages on rhodiola are tricky. It can be dosed as low as 50 milligrams for a mental improvement, which I think is just very low. And it can also go as high as 1500. I think a sweet spot is like one gram, which is a thousand milligrams. Um, so you'll feel that you'll feel the rhodiola like kick in. Right. And it has a pretty long half-life. So you'd want to take it early and it won't though make you jittery. That's the cool. It's like nice and even like a green tea. Um, so for, for that, now people that are more interested in ashwagandha goes up and down. That's yeah. the cool thing about that. Ashwagandha is just a killer. Again, that lowers blood. You'll see ashwagandha in sleeping pills yeah. and like morning AM fat burners. 
because ashwagandha also is wonderful at lowering um, blood sugar and and blood, blood blood pressure. But what's really interesting about ashwagandha compared to rhodiola is ashwagandha you can use to sleep, which is insane. You yeah. can use it over and overnight. It helps again uh, recovery, lowering. So you're waking up with flatline blood sugar in the morning, like like your your cortisol is being handled because most people their cortisol is high when they wake up, which is impossible for fat burning. So the, the recipe for fat burning is when your cortisol is really really low, right? And then you start mobilizing stuff, and then that can get you going. So I think like those two would probably be the best for an athlete. Um, now there's a, there's a new one on the market that I've been taking. <laughs> you're, you're muted. You're muted on there. Um, can you still hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's, there's one I've been recently taking called KSM 66. It's about 13 bucks. It's the pure, it's the root of ashwagandha. Now it might actually get banned in NUSADA because of its performance enhancing. It's been starting to prove in um, increases in testosterone up to 13%, which is high. So you're going to get increases in strength. Um, it's awesome for anxiety, depression. Uh, for that, you can take like 300 milligrams in the morning if you're like, at, you, you know, sometimes you wake up on morning and you're like on edge. That's something you want to take like 300 milligrams of and then another 300 like at night. And it'll help you even sleep, which is insane. It can, it can help you like come down or up. That's when it's, it's a pure like adaptogen because you can actually, you know, that's the thing with caffeine. If I take it, I'm just going up. It doesn't bring you down. Yeah. Does that make sense? But, but for, for, for a, you know, for, for the college kids coming in or anyone that's trying to get up without caffeine, without crushing your adrenal system, um, that one. And, and what's really interesting about, Rhodiola too, is it overall decreases cortisol. Yeah. So if you're at a cortisol 10, it'll bring you down to like an eight, Yeah. which is again, like, Hey, like, cause you know, even if I have too much caffeine in my system, that's going to increase my cortisol. So it's a, it's a really nice shoe. And, and again, all of the adaptogens are pretty damn cheap. Yeah. Well, you, you, I just started taking, um, hey. Uh, they just so so do I. I mean, all the ones that you just mentioned um, has literally gotten me down to um, to one cup of coffee a day in the morning. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Those are those those and like sometimes people get a little bit with like cortisepts. I'm not response. I don't respond to that very well. Um, but li lion's mane too. That's another one. It doesn't really fall under adaptogens, but that is an awesome mental stimulant. One of my, and it has neuroprotective capacities, neurogenesis, that's between 500 um, milligrams. You can take up to three days. A lot of people following a concussion protocol will take lion's mane post concussion. That's how strong it is. It's neuroprotective qualities of the brain. So again, you could stack, like if I've got a heavy work day of business and I have to be on, I'm on a podcast, I have to do a presentation, I'm taking rhode rhodiola and lion's mane. And, and ashwagandha, I'm taking them all because it's just going to, again, it's, it's going to bring me up, but without getting me like, like going through the roof. Yeah. No, I noticed that everything you're saying, I, I've been noticing that firsthand um, because, um, you know, I, um, I failed the stress assessment miserably. <laughs> sure. I, um, I just say my scores were higher than normal. And mm -hmm. uh, I noticed that as soon as I started taking the ashwagandha and the rhodiola, as soon as my cortisol went down, um, my abs actually started to come back in. Mm, mm. The increase in exercise. Um, oh, I really oh. think just my my cortisol was just going nuts, and uh, you well, know, there's I, I there's feel, one there's one more that'll help with that too. Uh, so there's there's one that flies under the radar, but it's it's huge. And so my aunt and uncle are both homeopathic doctors, and where most of my education is, and one killer is astragalus. So it's in a lot of teas, Ayurvedic medicine. First of all, anytime you get sick, it'll knock it out of your system in a tincture form. A tincture right under the tongue, out of the system. But what astragalus does that the other ones don't do, every single one, it actually, it, it, um, oh shoot, there's a specific word for this. Well, it inhibits 
So if it inhibits cortisol from binding, which is huge. I don't know. So if you take, here's, here's a kicker. If you've got a cortisol issue, astralagus and rhodiola, because astralagus will take cortisol and it won't be able to bind, right? And then rhodiola will, will lower the actual stuff in your system. So it can, cortisol circling and now it can't bind. And then rhodiola will actually take that number down. That's like a one, two punch. All of those are just, th those, I don't really go outside of literally ashwagandha, astralagus, rhodiola. Those are three actual adaptogens. The other, and cordyceps, that doesn't affect me. But lion's mane, it's a, that's an, another like mushroom, functional mushroom. But uh, those, I think people who want a stimulant effect would lean more towards probably lion's mane, rhodiola. Like that's something you can feel. You know what I'm saying? So if you have a big cup of coffee, you can feel that. But if, if you just want to kind of get a little bit of a stimulant, like eat ashwagandha can be a little bit of a stimulant as well. People that take higher dosages have felt a little bit of a stimulant effect. I think I had to start separating them out because I'm taking them in, in, uh, in conjunction with blends. Like they're all in blends. Oh, what, yeah. So the ashwagandha for you, you'd probably be good probably towards the higher end of 600 milligrams. Lion's mane is 500. Roli rhodiola for you, I'd go 1,000 or one gram. And astra astralagus is really tough. I've got a whole bunch of notes. I've taken, there's, there's stuff that goes between two and 30 grams. So I find this sweet spot to be around like, again, some studies are two to six, some are nine to 30, 10 yeah. to 35. Wow. I find the sweet spots like middle of it, like 15 to 20, 20 milligrams or grams. Man, so much hypeness. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, we talked about this. Yeah, I, mean, I don't have any blends. Huh? You're probably taking, you're probably taking, if it's a good, usually like ashwagandha is the lead. It in, is. In like, yeah, and then it's like berberine's the lead. So they'll take the heavy hitter and then they'll just kind of put like supportive agents. Yeah. But that's the one you're paying. And for me, like I, I go, I buy the full thing at a, at a high dose. So I don't have to take multiple shit over the day. So my um, ashwagandha KSM 66 is dosed at 300. So I just take that once. I don't really need to take 600 milligrams. But mine's definitely lower than that. Now all of a sudden, Janice comes out with all the stuff she's taking. She stayed quiet this whole time. Two, four, yeah. Ashwagandha, you just think two, four, six. 200 milligrams will help with sleep. 400 milligrams will do de uh, anything with like depression, anxiety, immunity, sleep, and 600s for performance. And and everything I just said. Yeah, uh, jeez. I'm down with man. I know, I know. I'm gonna go tinker. More money, I guess. But I, I, I like. But the cool thing about adaptogens, though, is this is I think one of the coolest parts about them. You don't need to take as much over time. Like now, I just take. I used to take berberine every day, but now I just take it with my carb ups, or I just take it. Just take it when I'm on vacation. You know what I'm saying? So like, you need less and less over time, or most things. You actually have to titrate up. Yeah. Or adaptogens, they just adapt. It's really cool. Like you need less and less over time. I know. And I, I, I use berberine for, I mean, I probably use it like once or twice a week. Yeah, yeah. that's, I mean, yeah. you, you could use it every day, but because you're already healthy and you already have the, the lower blood pressure and the, well, depending on what day you wake up, I've seen you <laughs> whoop stress. <laughs> bed yet. <laughs> yeah so did that that's a, but again i think for the average person the lower recommendations i said earlier they can rewind this are probably going to be the best but for you and i and janice where we've taken a lot of things yeah. i try to go a little bit more towards the upper end of suggestions yeah, yeah. all right okay. well listen that was an intense 30 minutes Thank yeah but i tried to cram it I, I did notes i tried to keep it tight i didn't want to ramble no, <laughs> I was happy. I got educated. I think the people that are going to listen are get educated. And, um, and I definitely now have something to send them as far as the things that That's I've been right. talking about in here. Um, because the, these, this, I mean, these are the main things that, uh, you know, we're, we're recommending to people to take. So I'm glad that we got to talk about it. But um, my, uh, my three ladies are here. All right, man, go train. So I'm going to go train them. All right. Uh, Miss Carrie is also here. I'm just going to put her in a little cameo. She's, she's oh my God. There. Why isn't Carrie running 10 on a treadmill right now? We're 10 get, to 10. We're getting a Woodway. No. I'm coming on that then. We are. 
Um, and uh, she's going to be on it. She doesn't know we're getting it yet. I just Straight up. Yeah, that's it. James, we're getting rid of those treadmills, so he's getting one. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we're getting one, so I can't wait. All right. Let's, hey. let's, let's put Michelle on it and put a cupcake on a string and just hang it right yeah. on the edge. <laughs> All right, man, go train. It was awesome. I'll see you later. Yeah. Later. Yeah.